Okay, so we went to go see Captive, which is the movie that's about uh, Ashley Smith and Brian Nichols. We got the trailer for it a bunch of times. Pretty much any of the religious movies. You adjust that light a little bit. It is literally blinding me. Aw. Uh, <laughs> fine. I'll be brighter then. There we go. How's that? Is that better? I got a tan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so we got, um, we got this trailer in front of War Room. We got it in front of Faith of Our Fathers, um, and God damn it, I've seen so many of these movies. Uh, what are some recent ones? Oh, 90 Minutes in Heaven. We got we got the trailer for it in front of that, and from the trailer, I, I remember when this happened. I, I I remember when the whole Brian Nichols thing happened, and the trailer made it look like. Uh, I mean, it made it look like a better acted movie than some of these movies that I'm used to uh, that I'm used to seeing. Um, the trailer did make it look like it's he, there's the sh there's the shooting spree that he goes on, and then he kidnaps Ashley Smith, and the trailer really does make it look like a good percentage of this movie is like them kind of reading a purpose-driven life to each other and then he maybe becomes a born again and then gives himself up um and that's not what this movie is it's really not yeah no i was <laughs> i guess if you guys want to stop watching because we liked this movie this movie wasn't bad <laughs> no we left and i was like that was not a bad movie it is um, I mean, it, 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 it's certainly a religious film. I mean, it, Oh yeah. Um, I mean, it, it is absolutely, but speaking, yeah, but like, well, yeah, I mean the movie, I mean, it opens with scripture and then at the end you have Rick Warren literally come out and on Oprah and well, it's, it's like actual like they show some actual footage of like like they, they, they this do, movie they... doesn't end with like he gets taken and then oprah just walks in <laughs> that, i've seen that in movies before um literally when oprah yeah i've seen plenty of these movies where oprah will just show up in there sometimes um <laughs> i've never seen that happen like but um oh yeah i remember oprah popping up and throw mama from the train <laughs> I have not seen that movie. That's a great movie. Um, I think you might have made that up. No, it's a good movie. That's uh, uh, Billy Crystal and Danny DeVito. Where I think you made those people up. <laughs> Billy Crystal and Danny. He was in the Critic episode we just watched. I think you made that show up. <laughs> I wish. I'm a genius. <laughs> no, the, the Reviewers is my show. <laughs> I think you made that up. I did. <laughs> I did make up the reviewers. Okay, people are probably getting annoyed by me at this point, so let's go back to the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, because we never go on tangents in this show. Yes, but when I do it, it's a problem. <laughs> well. Oh, she's looking at the camera, and she says like all the time, and she's giggling, and... Oh, they mostly yell at Brian for saying like all the time. <laughs> That's like crazy. That's like, <laughs> oh my god, I can't even like... I can't even. <laughs> but the movie, it, um... Where did we even leave off before we went in to throw Mama from the train? That's a random tangent. Just uh, Oprah. Oh, <laughs> Oprah. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> no, I I left this movie like, wow, I wish a lot more of these movies were like this. This actually has acting in it. This actually has direction. It's for a thriller. It's tense. It's suspenseful. It's the cinematography, and it's fine. Um... The dialogue is, for the most part, it for the most part it works. I mean, it obviously has a, a message that it's getting across, but it doesn't. And, and see, this is this is what I mean. Like none of these movies that we've reviewed very negatively in the past, we're not negatively reviewing it just because it's a fucking religious film, or just because maybe there's part of it that has kind of a religious angle to it. No. Movies like Saving Christmas, movies like War Room, movies like Old Fashioned are horrible fucking movies. Like, I don't care what you believe. I don't care what the what religion the movie is, honestly. A movie like War Room has an abhorrent, offensive fucking message mixed in with the fact it's the worst acted film of the year. And then you have Old Fashioned, 
probably a great love story if you're Norman Bates. <laughs> like, these movies have a gajillion goddamn fucking problems with them. And it's not just sitting here like I'm like some internet douchebag like the amazing atheist going, this movie sucks because they said God. <laughs> oh my God, I hate it when people say God. <laughs> like Dave gets, like there's, there's comments that pop up that seem to confuse Dave for somebody like that on the internet. No, Dave also says several times he doesn't care what your religion is. He just gives a shit that these movies are fucking horrible. Yeah, and this... This was a good religious movie. No, you can... Yeah, this is the, the rare one that actually works. Like, um... I more... This movie shows you can do a movie like this, and it can be fine. Like, I hell, I mean, I've even seen movies uh, from 70s and 80s that, that certainly have, like... Um, a message to it. You can say that about Oh God with George Burns and John Denver, which I think is a great fucking movie. Um, but anyway, aside from that, Oh God book two, not so much. I, somehow your shadow caught the corner of my eye and I thought there was a person just looking in the back window. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. My heart's just beating kind of fast. This, don't want to make people afraid of Detroit or anything, but this isn't the best area. <laughs> oh, now you tell me. Now that we're talking about this movie where somebody gets kidnapped. <laughs> so yeah, light up liquor store sign over there to <laughs> tip you off. The movie is, it's uh, it, Brian Nichols, he goes on his shooting spree and then he takes Ashley Smith hostage. A lot of the movie is them in their house. And what you see in the trailer about she's reading a purpose-driven life and then she reads a little bit to him honestly is maybe just about five percent of this movie i'm not even sure it was five percent like there's there's a scene pretty early on where um she like uh like he only just like untied her and let her out of the bathroom so she sits down and starts reading the book and he tells her to read it out loud, um, and she reads, like, a page of it, and he's like, oh, knock that shit off, I don't like that church shit, like, mm -hmm. you know, he's like, she's like, why not, and he's like, well, because, you know, like, I think it's, it's hypocritical, like, my dad went to church every Sunday and then came home and beat the shit out of me, which, and so many times in movies like this, there's, like, a character who is, like, anti-religious, mm -hmm. and it's just so overblown. Like, in Faith of Our Fathers, oh, what are you reading, a Bible? Yeah. Like, this was one of the first times where you had someone who was anti-religious for a reason that made sense. Uh-huh. Like... And also isn't villainized because of that. I mean, he's villainized because he's a rapist and a murderer. <laughs> Ambiguously a rapist. I mean, like, they say he's a rapist, he says he's not. They never really But I mean, it. yeah, but I mean, it addresses that, like, he is has heavy, heavy denial and that he's a paranoid schizophrenic. And this is another thing I like about this movie, is that you have two characters in this movie who are on pretty fucking dark paths. You have... Brian Nichols, who's going on trial for a rape charge, and then he just snaps and murders this judge, murders uh, um, a uh, uh, court uh, recorder, and also one of the guards, puts another lady it's... in a coma, kills it. Well, the... He puts the lady... The lady who he puts in a coma is a guard. Yeah. Um, at the end, it said it was the court reporter, court the reporter, judge... Sorry. And a that, senator that FBI guy. and the yeah the guy who I the FBI guy wasn't in the courtroom though that was later on. He, like, I just mean who he. Yeah no I'm just saying like he he shot like a mm -hmm. senator the the court recorder and the judge in the courtroom which watching it I thought he shot a lot more people. Um I no, guess people I, were I just remember. like. Or just watching the movie, oh, okay. like I, with, he was like kind of firing wildly, and like mm -hmm. they were like screaming and dropping. So yeah. I thought he just like killed everybody in that room, but apparently he didn't. It was um, it was intense. I mean, it's well shot. So you have yeah the like that's what I was thinking too, because like I was honest, I kept waiting for this movie to get bad, and it didn't. Um, and like at the beginning where he was like, um, 
like breaking out of the the cell and like I was like this is shot like really dr well dramatically yeah it looks like, like a movie it doesn't look like something that I could have done for ten thousand dollars with a, revo like, a reverse green screen from faith of our fathers like the <laughs> the foreshadowing was really good where like he sees the, the like locked up guns and stuff and then she tells him not to look at the locked up guns and like <laughs> I mean that was like two seconds of foreshadowing but it was still well done like it wasn't like he was like are there a guns in there yes there are don't look at them like <laughs> you have his story who he's this murderer who's escaped and then he's gone to look at his son through the window and then he leaves and then simultaneously we're getting ashley smith's story and it doesn't I mean, it really doesn't sugarcoat either of their stories. Oh, I no, mean, especially really Brian Nichols, but hers as well with being a no, hardcore was, drug addict. I was really worried they were going to just to have that, like, good and evil thing going on. That, like, they were going to uh. make it out to be that, like... I mean, because I, I'm, I wasn't especially familiar with the case. Like, once, once you explained to me what happened, like, I vaguely remember that happening, but I was pretty young when it happened, I think. Um, that was, I mean, and I'm also, like, I watch 24-hour news a lot, yeah, like a lot, know. and that was all over the news for a couple of days, uh, for, oh. like, as long, for when that was going so on. So, I, I didn't even know that, like, she was a drug addict and stuff. In the trailers, like, you were like, well, they showed her going to meetings, I thought it was, like, Bible study or something, just oh. knowing this kind of movie. <laughs> no, um, she's hardcore drug addict Oh, no, in this. she is, and, like, they, they do not sugarcoat it at all. Like, I, I was really expecting it to be like like he kidnaps her on the way home from church and then she mm. just won't stop talking about church and then church and church 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 no like, the movie doesn't like yeah she's reading like and some parts of it even kind of set it up like it's kind of like you said i was sitting there wait i don't mean to sound this cynical but i mean i was sitting there waiting for the movie well, to get worse it, but it like it wasn't getting the best reviews you said no either. not really i mean <laughs> better compared to some of these other movies but like yeah no but um, like i guess just knowing this type of movie and hearing it wasn't getting great reviews i was kind of like okay well maybe once he kidnaps her it gets it, bad and maybe once she starts reading the book it gets bad it just never does like it just continues to be a pretty decent movie it continues to be pretty intense like the it, it starts setting the book up at the beginning like the last half hour is going to be them reading the book because a girl gives her a, a girl at her meeting gives her the book but then she throws it away and then the lady gives it back Back to her with a note that says like you forgot this but then like it's just a couple of scenes later on where she's reading through it and yeah she's reading him some oh, passages yeah. to it but that just mainly gets Nichols more so talking about what some of his problems are yeah um, no it definitely yeah, I, I had started talking about that, and then we kind of went off on something else. There's the scene where she reads, like, a page of it, and he's like, fuck that church shit. He doesn't uh -huh. actually say exactly that, but pretty much, like, how he he doesn't like church because his father went to church and, mm -hmm. like, then was hypocritical. Um, and then later on, like, uh, like, she's she like makes him pancakes and then, like, he, like, pushes the book towards her and he's like, you can read this if you want. Um... And she starts reading it, and he's like, no, out loud. And, like, there's, like, like a little bit of, like, time skip where, like, she's reading a passage, and then it'll, like, skip to her reading something later, and they've, like, changed positions. Like, he's done mm. eating, and she's kind of curled up in the chair. Um, but, like, uh, yeah, really, that only... Because, like, she's like, um... Like, God didn't give you all of the good things in your life for no reason, or just something to that extent. Um... And he's like, God didn't give me anything. And she's like, well, he gave you your son. And, like, she, like, closes the book and they just start talking. And, like, at the end, it, it honestly seems like he lets her go because they've, like, gotten to know each other as people. And like, then, it just and then he seems wants to like, see his son. Yeah, like, it's, it's more like they kind of bonded over the fact that, like, uh, she's, like, trying to get clean so she can see her daughter. And he lets her go mm -hmm. because she promised her daughter that she'd be at, like, a school fashion show thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, they just both kind of bond over the fact that they're being kept from their kids. Um, it's, it, like... Yeah, the book plays something of a part in it, but it's not... And I don't have... Look, I mean, I'm not... 
a Rick Warren fan by any stretch of the imagination, but like, you can't, the movie's based on a true story. You can't do a movie based on this without that being in there somewhere, you know? And that's, and that's fine. I, I, I get it. I, I totally am. I'm not going to be like, this movie sucks just because like it, it, it gets kind of religious like here and there. No, that's oh, not yeah, the case no. at all. Like it, 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 it actually makes these two characters bond in a way. And also it writes the Nichols character well, and that he's not a two dimensional villain. Like they straight up say in the movie that, cause we're also following the cops trying to track them down too. And there's good there's good procedural work going on there too from the writing and the acting and yeah. and, and, and whatnot. Um, uh, and so they straight up say he's a paranoid schizophrenic. He's a guy who, when he was younger and when he was growing up, people were saying he was fine. And then before all this stuff went down, they were like, he seemed like a nice guy. So someone with that condition and someone how he's been described isn't going to be this just two-dimensional villain throughout the whole movie. Right. And they don't write him like that. Like, yeah, he's... This movie does not glorify him. It doesn't paint him in any positive light or anything like that, but it also doesn't make him a cartoon. Like, it makes right. him, like... He's an actual... He is a guy. He's not a good guy. But, like... Like, he comes off very threatening at points. Like, even though I knew this movie doesn't end with him shooting her, there uh -huh. were points where I was like... Uh. <laughs> yeah, there, there's parts in this movie where I was like, this is like a good version of like No Good Deed. I mean, No Good Deed's entertaining as hell, but it's entertaining garbage. Like when she was, she like tried to escape out the window, but it got stuck, and then she mm. had to like close it so he couldn't tell that she had been like trying to escape. Oh, that's when he's, he's, he's high off of meth when that scene yeah. is going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And like that, that scene was like, it was funny, but also really intense, because like, he's like, we're gonna steal a truck. We're gonna go to Mexico. We're gonna Where are rob we gonna a go? Bank. Where are we gonna go? Yeah. She's like Mexico. He's we're like gonna Mexico. Rob a bank. <laughs> we're gonna get our kids. We're gonna rob. First, we gotta rob a bank, and then we're going to Mexico. He's good. The acting in the movie is is solid. Like it's it's really fucking solid. Um, there's issues I have with the movie, but I mean it's not perfect. It's I wouldn't even say it's a great film by any stretch of the imagination. But going in with not great expectations. I did not think this was going to be something like War Room. Oh, like I, I didn't with either. with the actors that it has in it, and even the the story that it's based on. I'm like, it's at least going to be a well acted movie. Um, which I mean shows you how bad this genre is. Where you're like, this one's good. It's got acting in it. <laughs> I mean, it's, like, it's well acted. It's well like I thought it was a good movie. No, I did too. <laughs> I just I'm not saying that as a detriment against this movie. I'm saying that as in this genre has gotten so bad. Oh yeah, that when you you're... notice it when one has acting in it and direction and writing <laughs> yeah no even like watching the trailer i'm like even if this isn't good like she seems like a pretty good actress kate mara is like, a really good actress david oilawa they mm, i forget how to pronounce his name i but. also liked that they um they like weren't afraid to make her look really ragged too oh yeah like Mm -hmm. Like you could totally tell that like she hadn't washed her hair in a few days and like uh -huh. she didn't have a lot of makeup on and her lips were really chapped and I'm like mm -hmm. a lot of times like they're like yep yeah, I've <laughs> she like uh she's like yep she's addicted to meth but she looks like a supermodel like <laughs> Yeah. I mean, not that she was yeah. unattractive. Like, no, she's, she's pretty, attractive, yeah. But, like, yeah. she also, like, she looks pretty fucked up. Like, uh -huh. she looks like she's been having a hard time. Like, mm -hmm. her hair is definitely not washed. There's a scene like, in the movie where she's on the phone with her daughter, like, right after she's just done a line of math. Um, it's, it's, it really is an actor's movie. The movie is without... This movie couldn't have flown as well as it did if the acting wasn't as great as it was. Um... But I mean, there's there's a couple issues I have. What is, now? There is someone back there. Now that's <laughs> they're just leaving the liquor store. It's all right. There's barbed wire on the fence over there. We're fine. But um, there's a couple issues I have. Like one of which, like bad child acting. Um, yeah, the daughter wasn't that great of an actor. No, but is also. 
not in the movie very much. It was um, a lot of that, like, like, I mean, I get that, like, she had to kind of be, but it was definitely that, like, like... I was getting worried. I was like, oh, now it's starting to really feel like one of these movies. Um, I'm, I don't, I just don't know how to explain this particular kind of acting. Like... Re like, cutesy for the sake of being cutesy. Like, if she like, started replacing her L's with W's, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that kind of child acting, where it's like... I love you so much, Mommy! Yeah, like, oh man, like, you'd see the Olsen I'd twins you playing a this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, mmm, no. I gotta go, You're starting Mom. to lose me, movie. Oh, get the kid out of here. You're starting to lose me. This is starting to get a little TV feeling. Um... This character's not in the movie very much. She's not, but like the, she's like m much more perfect than any child ever possibly could be. Like this oh, is the right? most perfect, forgiving, understanding child. Like uh -huh. I honestly was almost kind of hoping that like at the end of the movie, like on account of the fact that she's a little kid, she'd be like, I don't care that you got kidnapped. You were supposed to be in my fashion show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's, like, when Ashley Smith gets in touch with the cops, it shows, like, the kid running out the door, and I'm like, okay, maybe that happened, but did that happen? Like, that seemed, like, really cheesy, dramatic for this otherwise pretty intense moment in the movie. I, um, I, it took me a minute to figure out why she had run out, like, if she had heard that the cops had found her mom like, were they did they have she... the news on at this child's pageant because that's why i was kind of expecting her to be pissed because i was mm. like did she run out because she was mad her mom wasn't mm. there because that's what i thought was happening at first but no she's totally understanding because she's the most perfect fucking child on the planet <laughs> and it i mean there's it... a lot of, like even in movies that like aren't this genre and are probably a lot better than this there's like uh those like painfully perfect kids because like the you kids being adorable and perfect like is kind of what's motivating the parent uh. to do something inception kind of had that like with james and philippa um like we miss a mommy, lot of these Daddy. movies have that though <laughs> like do you believe did that heaven is for real my god <laughs> that was that whole movie. <laughs> um, Just like infuriatingly perfect, adorable children. Mm -hmm. I went to heaven and saw Grandpa and he said that like, God's mad at you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this movie very much. Um, but I also, when it literally turns into a commercial for the book at the end... I didn't care. But that is only at the end. It like, is. you could walk out at that point you and miss could, nothing. Yeah. Well, my work here is done. Um, <laughs> um, like, it, I mean, it shows, like, what happened to this person? What happened to that person? All right, yeah, you're expecting that. Like, most movies like this do do something like that. But then, okay, it's showing the real Ashley Smith on Oprah. Like, I don't need to see this right now that kind of thing usually will take me out of a movie like um and then rick warren comes up at the end and it's literally turning into a commercial for the book and i yeah. didn't like that like uh, i'm like i have a feeling this would not be going like this if the book she was reading to him was dianetics <laughs> Can you imagine that? It's the same movie, and then at the end, David Miscavige walks out. <laughs> she was reading Fifty Shades of Grey, too. Oh, man. <laughs> right. What are you reading? E.L. James! Don't she read me that shit. You. Why the fuck do you think I went on this spree? They let you read that in prison? <laughs> that got dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and this isn't the video about cockfighting it's got that sense is going to be confusing to somebody who's not watched the other video go watch the other video <laughs> <laughs> yeah we saw a movie about brian nichols and we watched a cockfighting movie it was a weird day 
And then in between there, we ate at a Chicago restaurant in Detroit. This is a strange day. They did have really good mac and cheese. The nachos weren't bad. We had an hour to kill between, like, both movies. Um, I spent, like... Anime skateboarding, fuck yeah. There was an anime skateboarding store, which just <laughs> seems like it's something that would be owned by Jillian. <laughs> She likes both of those things. <laughs> it was like anime to skateboarding. And at first I thought mm -hmm. that was supposed to be like A to Z. Yeah. I know skateboarding doesn't start with a Z. Um, but <laughs> like I thought that's what it was supposed to be. Like, we have everything from anime to skateboarding. Mm -hmm. But no, it was literally like skateboards with Inuyasha. It's, a, it's a thriving business. <laughs> like, I looked in the window because they were closed because it's Sunday. <laughs> it's owned by the Chick-fil-A people. Well, I mean, just a lot of stuff around here yeah. is, though. Um, and, like, one wall had, like, skateboards, and the other wall had manga. <laughs> I. <laughs> and then in the middle, there were, like, th oh, those two things combined. And the logo on the sign had a roller skate. Mm. It did. Oh, this is confusing me so much. Maybe it'd be one thing if I skateboarded and watched anime, but I do neither of those things. But I do know how to roller skate. Do I'm actually a really good roller time. skater. Well, when usually when I'm roller skating, I'm listening to whatever 90s song is playing at Skateland. Ah, oh, sweet. Pump up the jam. You have not changed your CDs since 1992. <laughs> is Criss Cross coming up next? It sure is. <laughs> Do I even need to ask why the DJ has a rat tail and racing stripes? <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to go play the player's choice arcade. Obviously, because he races rats. Obviously. That's what they do in their spare time over at that place. They race rats on there. That's why I keep slipping on rat shit on the floor. <laughs> you can't see it because of the reflection from the disco ball. <laughs> um, I paid like I mean we saw this at a matinee so I paid like six bucks a ticket for six bucks I thought the movie was honestly worth it yeah like, I, I honestly really dug this movie um, I if I had paid like twelve bucks a ticket I, I don't know about that I mean this can easily just have I uh, have a good enough experience watching this movie for just watching it at home. Oh, like yeah. Like, if, if you rent it or something, or, you know, but, like, a matinee price for it, I was totally fine with that. Like, it was a fairly suspenseful movie, and it was, the acting in it was, honestly, worth the six bucks in and of itself. And even the fact that, like, Wow, like, I mean, like, you you actually can do a decent one of these movies. It's just proven to be really fucking far few in between. Don't get me wrong, like, I get excited whenever one of these movies comes out. I do, because when they have, man, like, What's you that just... that one, football one? I'm so excited Woodlawn. about that one. The one where the school is played like a villain because they go... You, you really can't be be having your players be talking about, God, this is a public school. Or, like, not even having your, like, you cannot be preaching to the football team. Yeah. This is a public school. And he, like, pushes things off the table and mm -hmm. storms out. And I'm like, but that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's coming out here in a couple of weeks. So... We got that one. Um, that's what I mean. Like, these movies, I do get excited for them. I do, because they're some of them, like War Room and Saving Christmas, are just going to be a level of batshit insanity and pure incompetence that you just rarely see on the big screen. And why I just, I making, get... Why are get, you making these kids pray? I'm not. They're leading me. Oh, the one girl who says, like, I was an atheist, but I saw how well this team works together. Like, then you're... you're I was an atheist, but then football! But then football. <laughs> like, wow, that's... See, you're very convicted in your beliefs, I see. Oh, religious sports movie, man. That's so up my alley. <laughs> this movie obviously does not remember the Titans. That was... Seems like it did a movie like this way better than this movie does. I don't know, though. I haven't seen it. It could be great. There better be a scene where two football players start kissing in the locker room. 
Well, if not, it's I can... the only scene I remember from Remember the Titans. I forgot the rest of the Titans. I can find... I can probably easily find us a gay porn where that happens. I haven't watched New York City Inferno yet. Maybe it happens in that. So next time on Midnight Screenings, gay porn. <laughs> yeah. I am sure there's a porno theater around here somewhere. This is... We're going to go to Chicago and do our uh, midnight screens from Boys Town. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So coming up in a couple of days, I'll be at the Green Inferno. <laughs> I'll be listening to you talk about the Green Inferno because I'm a late gore. <laughs> Maybe it's a very soft R. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> the fear will eat you alive. Maybe they don't mean that literal. <sighs> I feel like that's the whole joke, is that they do? <laughs> oh, they they totally will. <laughs> Hopefully it just has significantly less animal cruelty and pig fucking than the other cannibal movies. Because pig fucking isn't animal cruelty? Well, the pigs seem to be enjoying it a lot more than the pig who got shot. <laughs> oh man, That's how they made shot? bacon. Or fucked by a cannibal. <laughs> fucked by the cannibal is how we got bacon. The talking thing again. It, watch the egg video. And we'll explain to you what bacon is. <laughs> that movie just became so much less charming. Once you put once you put in cannibals, it's either gonna get less charming or or a lot more racist. <laughs> Again, because making it more racist makes it more charming? It depends on the kind of racist. Like, I mean, are we talking like... Are we talking like Birth of a Nation? Or are we talking like a Bugs Bunny cartoon where he's fighting the Japanese guy with bottle glasses? There's a huge difference. One is promoting the Klan. One is Mel Gibson... Or Mel Gibson. Mel Blank screaming gibberish into a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> That's our final thoughts on Birth of a Nation. <laughs> See you at Green Inferno. Bye. <laughs>